the best way to get started is just to understand the export options that uh, Itero gives you. And when you hit export under your case, it'll pull up these options. And basically, as you see it here, is exactly how you want to export your model. So that is as a solid model with a low profile base. Now they call this a low profile base, but as you'll see in a minute, it's actually a pretty chunky base, which I don't mind because that gives us a little bit of material to work with. And within the RP Slicer software, we can manage that really, really easily. The other thing would be uh, you want to export it as a file per arch, meaning that these models will be oriented in the proper occlusion and they will you'll be able to import them into design software and have the design software automatically articulate those, which is a really nice feature to have. And then thirdly, it'll give you the option of exporting as either an STL, a PLY, or exporting both. The PLY is the color model. Uh, you don't really need that if all you're doing is creating a printed model. So generally, I will just export these as the STL file type. And just understand that when you export these, it will export as a zip file, meaning that if you try to open the files directly from that zipped folder, it will not allow you. So what I do is generally just cr create a case for each patient and then drag or select, drag and drop those files into that folder. And that way I can do whatever I need to do with them. So as we pull this up, uh, what I've done is I've, I've opened this up in a, um, in a program called Mesh Mixer. And this is a free program that just helps you to manipulate STL files. And it's really, really handy for a few different things. And specifically what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to make this model hollow. So all I've done is I've clicked on edit and then hollow. And then what this will do is take what is currently a solid model, which is how iTero exports it, and I've just made it hollow. So this means that when you print it, it will use far less material than if it were uh, a solid model. And then if I use this feature called plain cut, because nothing really changes as far as how that model looks when you make it hollow, but if you take the top off, you can see that in the inside of it is hollow. So that's just a way to verify that the program has actually done what you've asked it to do. And then in this case, well, all we need to do is export it now. And when you export any STL from Mesh Mixer, it's always done as a binary format STL. And I'm just gonna save this as hollow. And this is just gonna be to show you kind of different ways that you can print these models. And like I said, printing it hollow just uses less resin and will create, um, yeah, just a more efficient way of producing models. And now I've opened up the RP Slicer software and I've imported both of our models. So one of these is a solid model that is exactly how it was exported from iTero. And the other one is the hollow model that we made in Next Mixer. And all I'm gonna do is select that upper right tool and put it on the base. And that's gonna basically tell the software what uh, part of that model I want flat on the build plate. So you can see I put that one on its side which we don't want, I want it flat on the base. And then as you look at the bottom, the whole base should be orange like it is on the right. If it's not, then you just kind of re-tag re that uh, base surface and it will it will reconfigure that. Um, so as we look at these now, we, we don't need to print that giant whole giant chunky base. So this tool on the lower left of that um, kind of four tool scope or globe uh, will allow us to trim that up a little bit. And this is the solid model. Uh, so as we trim that, all we do is we obviously reduce how much usage we're gonna have. And then when we go over to the hollow model and we do the same thing, just create, you know, basically make that as tall as you want it, however tall you want it, really easily by left clicking and dragging. Uh, you can see now we have two models. We have a solid model and we have a hollow model. And the other thing that you want to keep in mind is that when you have a hollow model, sometimes it makes it tricky for the resin to drain from inside that hollow model. So I will always, when I'm printing a hollow model, select channels. Um, and then I will always also add supports. And this is kind of a belts and, sus and suspenders approach, meaning you probably don't need to do both, but uh, I prefer to ensure that these prints are going to be successful, so I do it that way. The other thing about adding supports to a model is it makes it far easier to get off of the build plate. So 
Um, that is why I do it this way. And then now we are ready to roll as far as our print. So pretty straightforward. Um, you can see if we're if we're printing with with model Z here, it's a 22 minute to print both of those models. So uh, hopefully this helps. Uh, if you have an iTero and your you know printing models, which I think most of us do quite frequently, um, it's a good good thing to know how to do. Uh, this workflow just in a couple of different ways. And here, all I'm doing is checking by editing supports that none of those supports have been placed on the actual teeth. Sometimes the software will do that. And, uh, I always remove those if that happens. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Appreciate it.